Hello, baseball fans. King Ikibu coming to you live from the underground bunker deep beneath Tuk Tuk Tuk. And once again, we're continuing on our mad tournament. The Tournament of the Mad King. This is series number two. It is between the 11th seed, the 1992 Toronto Blue Jays, and the number 10 seed, the 1992 Milwaukee Brewers. And you may be asking yourself, how in the world are the Milwaukee Brewers the higher seed over the Toronto Blue Jays? The Toronto Blue Jays not only won the pennant in 1992, but they won the World Series in 1992. How could the Milwaukee Brewers be the higher seeded team? Well, and, and King Ikubu, aren't you Canadian? It is by your national right national responsibility to cheer for the Toronto Blue Jays. So how could you diss them in such a way? Well, I'll show you why. Even though I am Canadian, and yes, I would cheer for the Blue Jays over the Brewers any day, any time. You look at what our tournament is about. The Milwaukee Brewers are on the road. You might say, well, if they're the higher seed, why aren't they playing at County Stadium? They are the challenger because the Blue Jays were the actual actual leaders in the AL East that year. They had 96 and and 66 record and the Brewers were 92 and 70. But when it comes to the expected win-loss record, the Brewers were 5 games ahead of the Blue Jays. They had terrible luck. They had minus 4 in the luck uh, statistic and the Blue Jays were lucky by five games. So according to the expected win-loss record, the Brewers are the better team and therefore have the higher seed. Well, you think, well, I know about the Brewers. I know about the uh, Harvey's wall bangers of the early 80s, how powerful they were. What I don't know much about the Milwaukee Brewers of 1992. Well, they were not at all like Harvey's wall bangers. They didn't hit many walls in 1992. They only had 82 home runs for the entire season. That's 13th in the American League. However, they scored 5th in runs. They were a high average team. They were 2nd in the American League in average. And they were a speed team. First in the American League in stolen bases with 256, led by none other than Pat Listash. But everybody in the starting lineup had at least 10 stolen bases. And Daryl Hamilton, who's not listed as a starting outfielder, which is crazy because he was, had 41 stolen bases. And so this was a go, go, go Brewer team. They scored runs getting on base Advancing the runner, uh, stealing bases, hit and run, walks, uh, bunts. I mean, they did it all. That's how they scored runs. And don't forget the other half of the ball. Number one in ERA, 3.43 ERA, led by some guys who had their career years like Bill Wegman, Jamie Navarro, Chris Basio, uh, young Cal Aldred. Who will, if this goes to game three, will pitch game three. He had 11 and 2 record with a 1.79 ERA. So, unlike the Red Sox in the last series, if the Brewers, that's probably their strategy to get to game three because they will be able to throw Cal Aldred in game three, while the Blue Jays will have to go with Todd Stallemeyer. And he wasn't as good in 1992 as he was in 1990. So, the Blue Jays have to win these first two games. Uh, if it goes back to game three, they have they will be huge underdogs in my books. But they're, you know, be, you look at these guys. Nobody had home run. The leading home run hitter was Greg Vaughn with 23. And he only batted 228. He was like one of the weakest hitters on the team. Uh, they had some Hall of Famers here. Paul Molitor, 35 years old. Last year in Milwaukee, they had uh, Robin Yount, not like his 1982 MVP season. He only had eight home runs, only batted 264. But you put this collective uh, group together, 
They were a team. They played as a team. They sacrificed themselves for the team. It was about the front of the jersey, not the back of the jersey, as the old cliche goes. And that is why they are in this in this tournament. What other tournament of best of all time t- uh, tournaments would put the Milwaukee Brewers of 1992 in? But that's what we are different. We are different at King Iki Boo Land. We put a team like this into the mix to see what they can do because they deserve it. Even though they didn't play, I mean, you think 90s, you think steroids, you think home runs, you think, you know, uh, you know those big, you know, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. That's what you think of. You don't think of a team like this. They are very much like a 60s type team. Well, they're going to have their chance to shine here in this series. So we're going to start here and we're going to give you the lineup for the 1992 Milwaukee Brewers. Leading off, might as well do it here, leading off and playing left field, Daryl Hamilton. And look at his numbers. I mean, he could play anywhere. The only reason why he's not playing center field is because Yount can only play center field. But he's a 2-0. You just got to love those that uh, defense. Daryl Hamilton. I remember when I played uh, Stratomatic in the early 90s with friends. I had to get Daryl Hamilton on my team. I love the guy. Underrated ball player. Could do it all. He couldn't hit home runs maybe, but he was just my kind of ball player. Fun, fast, great defense, on base. No, you can't ask for more than Daryl Hamilton. Batting second, the before-mentioned shortstop, Pat Listash. Batting third, the Hall of Famer, playing first base, Paul Molitor. Batting fourth, the DH, Greg Vaughn. Batting fifth, the center fielder, Robin Yount. Batting sixth, the right fielder, Dante Bichette. Batting seventh, the third baseman, Kevin Seitzer. Batting eighth, the catcher, B.J. Surhoff. And batting ninth, the second baseman, Scotty Fletcher. And the starting pitcher today, Chris Basio. Now for the 1992 world champions and underdogs in this series. The Toronto Blue Jays of 1992 leading off and playing second base, Roberto Alomar. Batting second, the center fielder, Devon White. Batting third, the first baseman, John Olerud. Batting fourth, the DH, Dave Winfield. Batting fifth, the right fielder, Joe Carter. Batting sixth, the left fielder, Candy Maldonado. Batting seventh, the catcher, Pat Borders. Batting eighth, the shortstop, Manny Lee. And batting ninth, the third baseman, Kelly Gruber. And today's starting pitcher for the Blue Jays, Jack Morris. Should be a great series. Should be a great game here today. Let's start. Jack Morris, 21 and 6, but a high 404 earned run average. He walked too many guys, but he still was Jack Morris. I mean, he still needed, he got, he allowed a lot of base runners, let me put it that way. But when the clutch was on, he could get out of jams. He did it for the Tigers. And he did it for the Jays. So here we go. And it's on Hamilton or uh, Hamilton's card, yes. And he's going to lead off the game with a base hit. And he will be a threat to steal. Borders is a plus one. Morris is... I can't believe I don't have Pat Listashes. That will be corrected for game two. His picture, for sure. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, Hamilton with his 85% hold rating. And I checked and I am... Managing the Blue Jays, so the AI, I don't even know who their manager is. This is the kind of thing I should look for. Phil Garner, I should have known. That's a Phil Garner type of team, scrappy. Phil Garner, playing like their manager. Anyway, probably is still, yes, here we go. He's challenging Morris's pickoff move. He rifles one to first, and he just avoids a tag. So not only did he not get the jump, he almost got caught, leaning too far. So here's the pitch to Listash. Oh, they're going to go anyway. No, they're bunting. Yep, just like I said, they're a they're a uh, team that plays old school baseball. The fun baseball in my books. I don't, I'm just guessing that's too loud. Here's Molitor. In 1982, he batted 320 with 12 homers and 89 RBIs. He's an extreme 
versus left-handed uh, batter. He loves facing the lefties. He's not facing a lefty today. Let's see the difference here. So against lefties, I mean, everything in the one is great. Everything, and I mean literally everything in column three is good, is great. Uh, against the uh, righties, about the you know, a little bit better one in uh, lefty in the column one than than righty, but a huge difference in column three. All right, here's Molitor with a man in scoring position here in the first inning, and Hamilton's gonna steal again. And he's going for it with 60%. Like I said, they're aggressive. And he gets thrown out by Borders at third. So now they're not, you know, normally they'd question Phil Garner, but this is Phil Garner. Phil Garner, this is the way he played when he played, and this is the way he managed as well. So now nobody on for Molitor. And he doesn't get his column anyway. They wanted to get that runner to third base with one out. Okay, here comes the Blue Jays. Roberto Alomar leading off. He batted 310. He had a 404? Over 400 on base percentage. That's why I moved him up. I did the uh, the King Ikibu Mad King move by saying, you must have Roberto Alomar in the leadoff spot. I never understood why Devon White was in the leadoff spot with his 308 on base percentage and Alomar with his plus 400 on base percentage. So I made the switch myself. Here's Alomar doesn't get his column. So he's going to have a ground ball to Listash. And he's out. One away. Here's Devon White. Great center fielder. Not a great on-base guy. He has a chance to get on base here, though, with an 8 or less. Gets a 16. Fouled straight back. Sir Hoff gives chase. We know what's going to happen. It's going out of play. And then a sinking line drive caught by Scott Fletcher. And there's two away. Here's Olerud. You say, why didn't why you put Olerud at third? Wasn't it always Joe Carter? Yeah. You put your best hitter in the three spot. The best hitter is not... He's a great clutch guy. He's a great uh, RBI guy. But I like putting... In the third spot, I like putting some guy who's good, but he's bad in the clutch. I know, it's my theory that you face the clutch situation in this game less in the third spot. I mean, you don't in the first inning. It's impossible in the first inning. I don't know, it just seems to me from my years of playing this game that you just reach this situation where you face the clutch a lot less in the third spot than the fourth or fifth spot. That's why I did that. Anyway, here's Olerud. He's got the six column, and he's going to have a... Test for Scotty Fletcher, who I have all the faith in the world in that he will pass. He gets the RP, but we found out it means absolutely nothing. And it's an out. So after one complete, we're scoreless. Here's Greg Vaughn, their only power threat. And he's going to walk to lead off the second inning. He's probably the least likely guy to steal bases. And even that, he's still a 70%. Stolen base man. Here's Robin Yount. He batted 264 with eight homers, 77 RBIs. What will Phil Garner do? He gets a stolen. No, oh, he's out. So it must have been one of those automatic, automatic outs on the steal. So once again, Phil Garner so aggressive, he even throws Greg Vaughn. I always do that. The wrong thing. It's this I'm looking for. So I can see his stolen base numbers. Yeah, he's 15 for 15. So not very good percentage. And as a result, I guess we could look here to see what the, the actual stolen base numbers were. 2 to 8 and 11 versus 9, 10, and 12. So we must have rolled internally a 9, 10, or 12. I wish we could see that roll. Anyway, it's now it's nobody on for a yount. They've, they're running themselves out of the game so far. And here's Jack. He strikes him out. First strikeout for Jack. Here's Dante Bichette. 287 hitter, 5 homers, 41 RBIs. And it's going to be a test for borders. Not much can go wrong, really, when uh, there's nobody on base. But we'll go through the formality. I guess you can get a single. 
That's it for the Brewers in the second. Here's Dave Winfield, 290, 26 homer, homers, and 108 RBIs. Now, we play, We just finished playing the 1990 Blue Jays. And in two years, how many players are the same? I mean, Allroot was on that team. I don't mean to click that. Allroot was on that team, Borders, Lee, and Gruber that are uh, in the starting lineups. And if you look at the bench... Tabler wasn't, Bell, Kent, Griffin, and Ward. None of those guys were on the bench, were in that team. So there's four guys in the 25-man roster, 15 players that are on the same team. And they're not the same players. Allrude is pretty close to the same guy. I don't mean to bring up his card. I just want to click on him. Uh, Borders is worse. Lee is pretty much the same. And Gruber's way worse. Gruber had his... Greatest season in 1990 and kind of went downhill from there. He's here for his defense. Otherwise, we put Jeff Kent in the lineup, who's horrible defensively, but much better bat. So, has a team... Like, I can see a team on the bottom having that much turnover in two years, as the Blue Jays had. But this is not a bottom team. This is a team that won the World Series and were contenders every year from 1983 to... uh, 1995 and to have that much turnover in two seasons is quite amazing and to still have that kind of success it's really it's a testimony to pat gillick and how great he was anyway let's get the goal you're not you didn't turn tune in to hear me yap he's got his column let's see what he does with it nothing he is going to strike out basio and he didn't even swing he just watched it go by here's joe carter 264, 34 homers, 119 RBIs. Doesn't get his column. Has a very poor on-base percentage. When he makes contact, think good things happen, but doesn't always make contact. Here's Candy Maldonado. And he is going to fly out to left field to Hamilton. You know he's not going to make an error. It's impossible. In fact, look at the all across the board. Great outfielders, that's for sure. Blue Jays have the great infield. And, I mean, white in center is excellent. But these numbers here are excellent infield they had that year. Here's Seitzer. You probably know him better as a Kansas City Royal. In fact, there's his picture as a Royal, but he's with the Brewers this season. And here's B.J. Serhoff. He batted 252 with four homers and 62 RBIs. Gets his, gets his pitch. Was well, just a line out the third, and Gruber makes the play. Two out for Scotty Fletcher, the former Cub, the former White Sox. Now with the Brewers. He had a long career. He played, this is his 10th year in the major leagues. I know that because he started in 82. I know that because I know the 80s pretty well after playing every game from 19, 1980 to 1983 so far. Anyway, here's Borders. Not as good as he was in uh, 1990, though his uh, power is still pretty decent. But it's still it's in a 480 at bats, 13 homers, 53 RBIs. Gets his column. What can he do with it? He hits his good his good number six. Ten or less is a homer. Above ten is a double, and he gets a 15. And he gets a double. No homer for Borders. And he must be eating his Wheaties or something because he's two points higher in the speed factor than he was in 1990. Usually people get, especially catchers, get slower as they get older, but not Pat Borders. He is faster. So here's Manny Lee. Manny Lee batted 263 with three homers and 39 RBIs, but he's in for his defense, which was a 210. Anytime you have a 210 shortstop, you're doing very well. And there's a couple things there. Let's see if he hits one of them. He does. So he gets a base hit the other way, but that speed isn't the greatest. Even though it's faster, it's still only 1 to 11 against Hamilton's good arm. So I'm going to hold. There's nobody out, so why send anybody and make that risk? Even though it's Kelly Gruber up, and Kelly Gruber was dreadful. 229 average with 11 homers and 43 RBIs in 446 at-bats. Nothing like 19, 
90 where he was like 31 homers and 100 plus RBIs. So, yeah. He's definitely downgraded since 1990. Here's the pitch. He's going to walk. Good eye for Gruber. He puts a bases loaded for the man you want up in this situation. Roberto Alomar. He would love to hit the one column right now. And what? They're, they're going to throw the ball away over the head of Suroff. Borders will score. A wild pitch for Chris Bazio, who choked in the clutch. And the Blue Jays lead it one to nothing. And Alomar still up, ready to do damage. Hits his column. Don't hit the nine. Don't hit the nine. And he hits the nine. Because I told him not to. And he throws home for the out. What a difference that is. From all those other wonderful things. Instead we get Allerud. Was it Allerud? No, it wasn't Allerud. It was uh, Borders. No, Borders scored. Lee. Must have been Lee getting thrown out at home. Maybe I should just uh, read the play-by-play. -play. Yes, Lee. Should we just steal with Alomar? Stay all the double play. Might as well try. They have much better. Surhoff's a minus two, but we're going to try it. Unable to get the lead. Devon White is a very low... That's why I left him in the second spot, because he does not hit into double plays very often. He only has uh, 18 points on his card. So, and that way I don't have to hit and run or bunt or anything to prevent the double play. He's going to swing away, and he's going to get a chance at a hit. Otherwise, it's a line out, and line out does us no good. And that's what hit. We hit a 12, and it's no good. Soft line out to Fletcher. White never even left the batter's box. Here's all the roots. See, here goes my theory. What did I say? Bat batter in the third spot doesn't get the clutch situation very often. Here, the next time up, he's in the clutch situation. The 7 and 8 on column 3 are taken away from him. Doesn't hit it anyway. It's a catcher, oh, but he's a very good catcher, so I wouldn't hold your breath on something bad happening. PP. And no error. Let's see what that means. Popped up. Yeah, pop out and out. So they escape. Chris Bazio, the only way they scored on him was throwing the ball over Surhoff's head. That's the only way the Blue Jays were able to get a run. Otherwise, he was clutch. Here's Hamilton. He singled last time up. Gets the one. And hits the ball to right. Carter is there. Makes the play. One away here in the fourth. Here's Listash. They want to get him on so he can use his great speed. But he picked the wrong column, and instead he strikes out. Strikeout number two for Morris. Here's Molitor with the bases empty. Gets his roll. What will he do with it? He hits the nine again. Pulls all off the bag, but he swipes with his glove and gets Molitor for the third out. After three and a half, Toronto won, Milwaukee nothing. Here's Winfield. Struck out last time. Hits his column again, but he hit the nine. The nine is not is what we're rolling all the time. Oh, he rolled a three. So he didn't hit the nine, but still bad. So Carter's in the all next circle with one out. Here he is. Doesn't get his column. Hits so he'd be a triple play if there was two men on. Then he hits a soft liner, two out. And Maldonado flied out last time up. Bazio is pitching very well after getting in trouble last inning. Deep left goes Hamilton. Racing hard. He dives. He gets it. Beautiful play by Daryl Hamilton. The man should be remembered. And we're going to get this all weekend. This Carl Lewis thing. Because this is what happened in, in 19... Oh. Must be 1999. Because I put this... The year for this tournament in 1999. So that's probably what happened. Anyway... Here's Greg Vaughn to lead off the fifth. Four. And gets another walk. He walked last time. He's not noted for his patience, but he's on twice. Will they send him again? Will, will Garner remember what he did last time and learn from that? No, yes, he did. Yount doesn't get his pitch. He hits it to center field. Not quite Ellis Burke's rating, but pretty close. 
And he's gone. First out here in the fifth. Here's Dante Bichette. Fouled out last time up. Not much hope in that column. Hits the ball the other way to Joe Carter. And he makes the play. Two down here in the fifth for Seitzer. 270 hitter with five homers and 71 RBIs. A lot of RBIs for somebody who uh, had only five home runs. And look who's going again, Vaughn. This time they didn't get the automatic out. So he has a good chance, perhaps, of stealing the base. No, he's going to be thrown out again. Maybe, you know, he can run all the other guys. I know he's the only guy getting on base consistently so far, but maybe hold off on the aggressive base running until some of these other guys get on. Here's Borders. He hit that double and scored. The only run in this ball game so far. And he gets a possible hit if we get 10 or less. And we get the one, so he's two for two. So there's been four hits in this ball game, and two of them have been by Pat Borders. Here's Manny Lee. Manny Lee singled last time up. And what's his double play rating? 28, a little bit higher. But we'll let him swing away. It's a six. And it's a fly ball to left field. You don't hit it there. He's too good. Hamilton, easy out. And here comes Kelly Gruber. He reached on a walk. He can't bunt. He can't hit and run. And he probably hits into a thousand double plays. Let's see if that's right. Well, more than everybody else. And yet, what else can we do with him? We got a swing. And look at this. Just what we feared. Balls hit the Seitzer to Fletcher to Molitor. And that's it for the Blue Jays in the fifth. After five complete, we're still one to nothing in this pitcher's duel. Duo. Duel. Anyway, here's Seitzer. He was on... He's at the plate when uh, Vaughn got thrown out last inning. He has a chance at a hit. Very good chance of 16 or less. With the five, he is on. The leadoff hitter is on. 13 stolen bases. Let's see what his uh, stolen base rating is. So 2 to 7 and 10, he steals. And 8, he's thrown out. That still is risky to me. But, of course, I'm not Phil Garner. And he's going to go. And he doesn't get the 8, so he's lucky there. Let's see if he gets the stolen base. 15, he is out of here. Boy, Pat Borders. He's got the plus one arm, but he's thrown out three Brewers so far in this game. Here's Serhoff with one out. And if it was successful, they'd probably have a couple runs, so you can't really blame them. That's their game. They have 250 stolen bases in the season. You can't blame Phil Garner for stealing bases. And here's another possible hit. It rolls an 18, so it's a line out. And that is the end of... No, it's two out here in the sixth for Scott Fletcher. And now it's three out. And we Stratomax doing their thing here. When we know it's just an easy out. I guess for those people who uh, don't get the cards... The cards, uh, you know, to play without the cards. I don't know why you'd ever do that, but... I mean, those who play without the cards, I guess this foul, that's really adds the suspense when we know for a fact that it means nothing. Here's Alomar to start the sixth inning. He is 0 for 2. Let's see if he can get on for a change. And he hits a good one there. He's not, he's a W. So this is one of these rare cases where we'd rather roll higher than the home run number. He only had eight home... Eight home runs, I guess, in 571 at-bats. It's a W, I guess. And he rolls an eight, so it's only a base hit. Power is weak. So we're going to try to steal. We haven't learned from... Oh, they're going to bring in a pinch... A, uh, start on a pitcher, a relief pitcher. Dan Plesak is coming into the game to turn Devon White around. As Devon White is at a 3R... And Allroot is up next. So that's the method. That's what Phil Garner's thinking. To me, it's a little early when Bazio is pitching so well. But, you know, he's the manager. Okay, here's White. 
We're not going to do anything. We're going to let him swing away. And he does nothing with his at-bat. He just lines out weakly to Lestash for the first out. And here is Alarud. Alarud's 0 for 2. Grounded out and popped out. And he gets a bad column. I guess it's better than hitting into a double play. He strikes out. So, so, so please, Zach. And people love to uh, send me messages when I'm recording. It's my sister who is consoling me because the Islanders have just been eliminated. I can guess what that means. Because my, my sister... Okay, so everybody in my family is from Edmonton. Okay? I'm the, I'm the guy that got out. And I'm way in the south. And so my sister is like the world's biggest Oiler fan. And so I hope she was sincere in her condolences. At least the Islanders made the playoffs. That's all I can say. Anyway... Here is two out and Dave Winfield. Let's see what he can do. He gets his bad column. And that's easy play. So Plesak does a great job. Makes Phil, Phil Garner look good. And after six complete, it's still Toronto 1, Milwaukee nothing. Jack Morris is still going strong. There's no reason why we should take him out. And here's a test for Alomar. Did you see that? Did you see what his rating is? 1-6. I'm willing to uh, wager my life savings of 25 cents that he will make the play, and he does. It's 25 Canadian cents before you get too excited about that. Okay, here's Pat Listash. He has done nothing so far. Well, he sacked bunt and struck out. So he did something, I guess. And he gets a pretty decent column there for him, and he hits the right one, and he gets a five. He really would have loved that triple, but he is on base, and he's the guy now that you should steal with, Phil Garner, because he had 54 stolen bases and caught 18 times. So he's the guy. And let's see what is... So 2-6, to six and no automatic outs. 2-6. to six. And there we go. So let's see if they... I'm sure he's going to go for it. And he is. He wants to unnerve Jack, and no doubt he does. Steps away from the mound. Good step away by Jack. They still might send him. I wouldn't doubt it. 60%. Let's see. And I did not adjust the in any way. This is a totally vanilla computer manager. Okay? This is the, the basic computer manager. I didn't jack up the stolen bases or something. So they're going for it at 60%. We're going to see if uh, Borders can do it again for the fourth time in the game. And it's always by one. You know, he always rolled, it was two of the times it was 14. He rolled a 15 twice. And this is, was a 12 and rolled a 13. So Pat Borders has four throwouts, caught stealings in this game. Otherwise, it'd probably be three or four to one right now. Here's Molitor once again with two out. And right now my sister's thinking, he's, he's, he's so upset that the Islanders lost, he can't even respond to his sister. No, dear sis, that's not the reason. I'm a little bit busy right now. And look, and a Molitor is busy as well, as he hits one over the head of Candy Maldonado into the corner and is on base in scoring position with a two-out double. And now, Vaughn... That's when you want Vaughn up now with a man on in scoring position. And it doesn't look like he loses anything in the clutch. So maybe we should... Do you... Uh, Yount? I always do that. I want to look at this so I can see the clutch rating. So Yount is a little bit better. So uh doesn't really pay to walk him. We're going to pitch to Greg Vaughn. Here we go. The most tense part of this ball game so far... And Jack does what Jack does. He strikes him out. Strikeout number three for Jack. Which player has the second most career Grand Slam homers? Oh my. I'm just showing my ignorance, aren't I? Ah. Second most Grand Slam homers. Willie McCovey, 
Lou Gehrig with 23. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Willie McCovey is way off. Anyway, back to the action. Not to the King Ikiboo's ignorance. So we're in the bottom of the seventh. It's still one to nothing. Milwaukee's had chances. They've had base runners. But none of it's panned out so far because of the all of a sudden mighty arm of Pat Borders. Here's Joe Carter. They're leaving Plesak in to face all these right-handed batters. And now Molitor's going to be tested here. Didn't bounce, and he makes the play. Good job by Molitor. Not playing in his usual position. He spent most of his career at third base. He played some center field, some second base, but now he's, as he's aging, he's now at first. Here's Maldonado. Flied out twice. Gets his pitch. And he gets a base hit. Only the fifth hit for the Blue Jays. Against Milwaukee pitching, that's what they do. Number one pitching staff in the American League in 1992. Here's Borders. And I imagine Borders is a very big double play man. Well, not as bad as Gruber. In 1990, he was 70s or something. Really high. Two for two today. We'll let him pitch. Let him stay in the ball game. And he gets the walk. So there's two men on now for Manny Lee. And there's no way on earth I'm going to pull Manny Lee with his great defense. So he's going to have to do it himself. He's only got a 278 on base percentage chance. But we got the lead, so there's no reason why we sacrifice our defense. And as a result, he strikes out. Although it's on the pitcher's cards, so no matter who we threw up there, it'd still be a strikeout. And here's Gruber. He only has a 228 on on-base chance. Now I'm thinking, but you know, we're up by one. There's no guarantees in life. His, his clutch goes down to 194. Kent, much better. His goes up to 260, but his defense is 439. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Wouldn't be prudent. Gets his column. It means nothing because there's a bunch of clutch on there. And he gets a strikeout. And the fans boo him. Yeah, boo him. Oh, come on. He plays injured. He gave everything he had to the Blue Jays. So don't boo the guy. Anyway, we're through seven. Still one to nothing. Jack's still on the mound. 95 pitches. Here's Yount 0 for 2. There's a few things there, but he doesn't hit them as he strikes out number four for Jack Morris. One away here in the eighth. Here's Dante Bichette. Fouled out and flied out. Three. And he hits it the other way. Carter, he's been quite busy out there in right field. And he makes the, the out for no, number two. And Seitzer. He's one for two, lined out and singled. Gets a six. There's a few things there. But once again, they don't hit any of them. And they strike out again. Number five for Jack. Very strong game. He's pitching a shutout through eight. And they're going to keep Plesak in the game. Okay. It's your choice. Gets a good column for him. And it's a choice. Oh, here's, here's... I always want to call him Dougie Hamilton. You know, got hockey in the brain. Dougie Hamilton just beat the Islanders. You're saying, why aren't you watching the game? You know, I have to I have to admit, I've got all the sports. You know, I can watch all the sports anytime, all the sports packages and all that, but I rarely watch sports. I follow sports. You know, I like reading about sports on Sirius XM. You know, I have a 25-minute commute every day. Listen to the doggy. Uh, listen to NBA radio, all of them, you know? So I, f I listen, I follow, but I don't hardly ever watch sports. I, I'd rather make a video. I'd rather play, you know, old time sports. You know, that's where I spend my time. I don't have time to watch sports. I guess sometimes I can put it on, but then I play a lot slower. I don't get a lot done. So, hey, confession time. And you can tell by my trivia question answering, you know, uh, I'm not very good at trivia, so probably haven't seen the games. 
So Hamilton, Daryl Hamilton makes the play. Not Dougie. And it's one away here in the eighth. Here's Devon White. He's lined out three times. Let's see if he can do something different. It's, well, at least he hit on the ground. He ground ball this time. And White is out. And here's Olerud. I mean, when the Cubs are in the World Series and stuff like that. I, I watch a lot of Cub games, okay? I'll watch them anytime. But uh, it's hard to watch baseball, you know, just sit there and watch baseball only. I... You do other things when you watch baseball, and, and that's what I that's why I like it. You know what? You don't have to watch it every second. You can have it on the background. Anyway, here is uh, Sirhoff here in the ninth. So they have three more chances to get their one run, and Jack is still going strong. Get his calm. First one. But he hits uh, five, and it's a ground ball to Alomar. Hitting it to Alomar is not the recipe for success. Scotty Fletcher. Scotty Fletcher gets the column one. He hits it to Manny Lee. Not much better than Alomar for the offense. Two away. And here's Hamilton, the last hope for the Brewers. Gets a decent column. But he misses all the stuff. Ground ball to Allrude. Makes the play. A well-played ball game. And the... Not only the hitting star for the Blue Jays, but the defensive star for the Blue Jays was Pat Borders. He was the man of the game. You can probably give it to Jack as well. I mean, he only threw a four-hit shutout, but he's been overshadowed by Pat Borders and his arm. Well, that is game one. Very close game. Uh, I was talking about a lot of other things than the game. I should have talked more about that game. A little bit distracted. My sister threw me off. But anyway, uh, the game is over. The score, the Blue Jays one run, five hits, no errors. And the Milwaukee Brewers no hits, four, no, no runs, four hits, and no errors. This is King Ikibu signing off. We'll see you in game two tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody.